Sean Don is back, coming to talk to you about my go-to drill series for developing hammer footwork and technique and feeling and all that good stuff. And the camera will fall. A little change of scenery here because my camera setup was terrible. So before we get into the meat of the video, I just wanna let you guys know that this is an accompaniment for a blog that I wrote covering this drill series. It's much more detailed, much more in-depth. So go check that out. It's gonna be linked up here, somewhere in the corner, or maybe it's this corner, I don't know. And if it, I can't link it there, then it's gonna be down below in the description. So, what is this, why is this, who is this, how is this, this drill series? I started doing this drill series over the past couple cycles of the 2018-2019 season as my specific warm-up. This drill series is best used during times of the year when technical learning is the highest priority. For me, that's typically the first couple months of the season when I'm trying to lay down that base technique to build off of in the future. And then I think also it would be it would be very useful just after the indoor season when you're trying to get rid of all those terrible feelings that you developed from throwing the weight like I know you're gonna do. So that's when I would use it. This drill series is a combination of a few different methodologies and together I think they provide a nice synergistic sort of benefit that really allows technique to be developed and feelings to be developed and, and for technical changes to be made. So part one of the drill series is stick drills. That these are the simplest yet least specific drills for throwing in this series since no weight is being held and uh, the movements are segmented. Normally I'm not a fan of unweighted drills but in this context they help establish feelings an athlete may otherwise not be able to understand when they're under load you know like when they're holding an implement or a pod or something. I guess the saving grace for the stick drills and why I still recommend them even though I said I'm not a fan of unweighted drills is that uh, these new feelings are reinforced later on with the drills that follow which helps skill learning and motor development whereas if you were to do them by themselves and then just go straight to throwing there would be really no correlation at all but if you work up in intensity and work up in complexity and specificity <laughs> then um, things are much more uh, reinforced as I've already said. So these drills are typically performed with pauses at 0, 90, and on the catch. And then I pause for a split second in each position to make sure that I'm getting the technique and the feelings and the positions that I want. Normally, my posture is the focus for the stick drills. I'll perform each of these exercises for one to two sets of eight to 10 reps. So that's the basis of the stick drills. Very simple, but very effective, especially with everything that follows. Part two, the pud drills. So the pud drills are the next step in the series. They are slightly more complex, more specific, they have more load, but it's a good bridge between the stick and the hammer, whereas the stick has no weight and it's immediately right here in front of you. The hammer is very long and far away from the body, making it harder to translate those feelings, and I think the pud serves as a good middle ground or bridge, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's close enough to the body so that if you feel something go wrong, it's easy to feel. Whereas with the hammer, it's so far away, you can do something wrong and not feel it or understand what's happening until a couple turns later. The putt is immediate. Be careful though, because the short length is a double-edged sword. Be sure to put extra focus on really relaxing the arms and the shoulders when doing the putt drills. Otherwise, you'll become tight and you'll end up gripping and ripping, which is the exact opposite of what this whole series is about. You wanna be relaxed and have better feeling and better connection. The tighter you are with the arms or the more you lift up and down with the hands, the more bad habits are gonna be created and it's not gonna help out. So relax. So the focus of the pud drills, whereas the stick drills were about posture, the pud drills are more about working the left and right sides of the body together in conjunction with the implement. Uh, you don't want to pull the left side ahead and you don't want to uh, leave the right side behind. You can't really see my lower body right now. That's what you need to be seeing. But you should be able to see in the video. Basically, you just want to turn with the implement. Work with it. Don't work against it. So for the putt drills, just like the stick drills and like the entire series, um, perform one to two sets of approximately eight to ten turns in total. So like if you're doing three turns, just do nine. Do three sets of three. Or if you're doing uh, four turns, do two sets of four. Just about eight to 10 turns, like I said. And then also opt for a lighter putt. I'd say 10 to 16 pounds for women and uh, 20 to 25 pounds for men. If you go too heavy with these, it's more likely that bad habits will be formed. You'll lift your hands or tighten up. You wanna do it right. You wanna make this skill learning the, as easy as possible so you can reinforce it more and more as time goes on and challenge yourself. Do it right first 
and then move on. Don't challenge yourself so hard from the start. And I guess if you don't have a PUD, a kettlebell or a dumbbell or a weight plate, whatever it might be, anything just getting, getting that weight, that getting that feel in your hands, like I said, kind of close to the body, but not so far away like the hammer will help bridge the skills that you are developing. And feel free to perform all these PUD drills in the opposite direction as well. This can help learn new feelings and I guess potentially improve motor learning, if I recall correctly from some studies. And it can maybe help prevent imbalances in the body by working the opposite side. And the last benefit of the PUD drills is stopping the PUD. So after every turn, this deceleration and bringing the PUD back to center before you start again actually serves as some uh, eccentric strength training in a way, I guess, in the throwing motion, which is very hard to come by. Additionally, it, uh, it helps teach us some balance and coordination and really make sure that your positions are solidified before you stop the PUD or as you stop the PUD. Moving on, part three, the hammer drills. This is with the meat, you know, getting to the good stuff finally. So now it's time to put the hammer skills to the test by picking up a real life hammer. This part of the series should really help provide some excellent feedback for everything that was accomplished during the previous two sections. The big key with the hammer drills is to go as slow as possible. Going slow is much less forgiving and uh, it really helps an athlete feel what goes wrong and I think that's why people hate to go slow because it says, all right, I go slow, it feels choppy, I can feel myself getting pulled forward and all this other stuff and then it kind of hurts our ego because we think, oh, maybe I'm not as good at this thing as I want to be or as I think I am. It, just going slow really makes you realize how bad or inefficient your technique really is. The best throwers, I think, can take a throw as slow as they want or as fast as they want and it looks the same on both ends of the spectrum. But the closer you can get to that, the farther you're going to throw, the more you're going to develop, the better technique you're going to have, the more efficient you're going to be. It's all that good stuff. It does take a lot of discipline to accomplish this, but you'll thank yourself much later on uh, once you're throwing much farther without trying as hard and winning meets and breaking records and setting PRs and all that stuff. And just like the previous two sections, complete one to two sets of 10 total turns about approximately uh, for each exercise depicted here. Just like the pud drill opt for a lighter hammer. So yeah, so like a three or 4K for a women or a 14 to 16 pound for men. There's no sense in challenging technique with a heavy ball when you can't even do it with a light ball. Like they say, you have to walk before you can run. So part five, what do I focus on in these drills? What are my focuses? What are my cues? Basically, I'm just trying to groove in the basics here. Posture, relaxing the arms, pendulum, working both sides of the body together with the implement, letting the ball pass, uh, whatever it may be. Just try to pick one to two things to focus on solely. Um, that way you can really nail it down before moving on to the next thing. That's how you master technique. You don't do it once and move on to the next thing. You do it a thousand times correctly and then move on to the next thing. So that's the way it's really solidified in there. For a semi-extensive list of the cues that I use, check out the link once again up in the corner or down in the description box. I don't know where it's gonna be, we'll find out. But it's in the blog, go check it out. I put together a list probably this long of cues. And uh, yeah, I think it would be good for you guys to see you go check that out. So, part six, conclusion. This series is all about repetition. Um, normally when I complete this series, uh, I'll get in a solid uh, anywhere from one to 300 turns depending on the day and what I'm focusing on and and, uh, and what part of a cycle I'm in. I, th I think the series at most takes me 30 minutes to complete. Much more bang for your buck in terms of repetition and learning technique. But the biggest thing for this drill series, really for anything in life, for any training, for any diet, for anything, you have to know your intentions, know your why. Just make your intentions clear when you perform this drill series. Write down what you want to achieve. What technical aspect are you trying to fix? What, uh, what are you trying to feel? Just have a clue of what you're trying to accomplish when you perform this drill series, and it will be infinitely more beneficial. Outside of that, just take this drill series, turn it into whatever you want. Add exercises, remove exercises, add a new section. I don't know, but if you do, let me know, and maybe I'll try it out, and we can all get better together. That's kind of why I do all this stuff, because I want to help progress the sport, and help you guys achieve your goals. And also keep in mind, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And once again, this is true for everything in life. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. If you take these drills in this drill series and you perform it with the same technical faults that you make every day in practice, you're not gonna get any better and you're just gonna groove in those bad technical habits. What you need to do is experiment and try things out, review video, uh, try to find new feelings. Be mindful of the things you are doing in each turn, in each drill, 
Uh, and like I said, it ultimately comes back to intentions. I can't say that enough. But you also need to be patient. Don't do this drill series one time and expect to put five meters on your throw. Don't do it a hundred times and expect to put five meters on your throw. Do it maybe a thousand times and then expect to put one meter on your throw. Change takes time. Efficiency in technique takes time to develop. In one, two, three, seven, eight, ten sessions, you're not going to see much change. If you do, good. But for the most part, it's going to take a long time to change. So stay patient and be mindful of the changes that you are making. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, go check out some of my other videos. I'll link them uh, somewhere in the outro. Uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, go watch those and learn some more stuff about the hammer throw and throwing and what it takes to be a professional hammer thrower. I don't know. And the goal for this season is to uh, post a video every two weeks. I know last year I said one video every week and uh, it then that it lasted for about two months, which is honestly, that was, that was good. But now the goal is video once every two weeks with an accompanying blog so I can be more in depth and explain my thoughts more. That way these videos aren't 20 minutes long. So look forward to that stuff. That being said, share this video or chance to be shouted out in the next video. All right, I'll give you a little Instagram shout out down here. Yeah, all you gotta do is share it, tag me in the post, let me know what you guys thought about it and I will give you a shout out in the next video. And uh, if you're new here, make sure you guys subscribe, like the video if you haven't already. If you guys enjoyed this content, I would really appreciate it. I'm looking to post this stuff more frequently. My life is in better order than it was last year when I started doing all this YouTube stuff. I'm much more organized, much more disciplined. So I'm excited to share much more of my life and my training with you guys. But thanks for watching, Sean Don, peace and out.